Do you want to see something insane? I'll show you an unbelievable trick you can use to solve very hard Sudoku. And with that, it's solving time. First, you test how hard this puzzle is by looking for digit restrictions and easy solves. If you notice, there's a 9 and 1 coming down column 8. There's also a 9 and 1 cutting across row 8. So where can the 1 and 9 be in this block? Well, it has to be in the same two cells right there. So that forms a 1 and 9 hidden pair. It's a huge clue to help you figure out the unbelievable trick in this puzzle. Greetings, friend. I want to thank Shy for working with Sam, Kaplman, Lines, and Sulfur to create this awesome puzzle that features an unbelievable Sudoku trick I'd never seen before. And to get there, you got to continue to look for digit restrictions from one to nine. So if you look where else the ones can be, you'll notice besides these two spots, there are no other places where you can remark where you can mark only two spots for a one in a three by three block. So look at the twos, you'll notice with this two coming up the column and this two cutting across the row, there are two places for a two in block one. So you want to mark that. And then with these twos, only two places here in block four. And then if you happen to look down in block nine with these twos, because you have that hidden pair marked, only two places left for a two in block nine. If you move on to the threes, there are no three by three blocks where you can only mark two possibilities for a three at this time, and there's no solves you can make. Same thing with the fours. I mean, this is an extreme puzzle. It's gonna be hard to find stuff. If you go with the fives, you'll notice with these two fives, it leaves only two places for a five in block seven. Nothing else you can do with the fives. How about the sixes? With these two sixes, two places for a six in block three. No other marks or solves with the sixes. Move on to the sevens. With these two sevens and this seven, you have two places for a seven in block three. No other marks or solves there. How about the eights? With these two eights, you have two places for an eight in block eight, and that's it with the eights. And then the nines, there's only the hidden pair of nines right there in block nine, nothing else. And that is it. Went through this puzzle, no easy solves, and just very few marks. And now the question of the day. What did you do at this point in the puzzle? Please, 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 please share in the comments. Help me grow the internet's best Sudoku community. I'd love to hear what you did or tried at this point. And when you have an extreme puzzle like this or any advanced puzzle, you got three choices what to do right here when you're stuck and you can't find the basic strategies that I talk about in my free Sudoku solving guide. And so you can either look for single candidate strategies or you can look for strategies that involve buy value cells. So you can mark up all the buy value cells and look for those types of restrictions. So I'm telling you, if this puzzle is extreme, you're gonna need more than that. You should go right to that third option, which I reserve for extreme puzzles. And what that is, is try to look for setters intent. I mean, Shy and Sam and Sulphur, the three of the best setters. I've featured each of them many times on this channel, and you know they're trying to come up with something you as a human can find and solve. There's also a hint in the name of the puzzle, Windward. Uh, Shai named it after the Windward Islands, which is a group of three island territories owned by the Dutch in the Caribbean. And so you have this hint right here, this one nine. So that's gotta mean something. If you also look, you wanna look at given digits that are arranged kind of funny or that seem to point to something and in block one you should see that as well and so you got a one nine here set to three let's look at where all the ones can be in this puzzle so you want to kind of go there because if you can eliminate a one or nine from one of those two cells hopefully you can make some progress here ones can be all there ones can be there can be here 
there and these three spots. Okay, doesn't seem like much right here. However, you notice there's a conjugate pair of ones here. So if either one's got to be there or it's got to be there. Okay, conjugate pair of ones in column nine. So one's either got to be here or here. And of course, here in block nine. So there's something going on. If you study the row and column, you'll notice in this cell, which everything seems to point to, what can it be? It can't be a four, five, six, seven, eight, or a nine. This can only be a one, two, or three. Okay, and then if you move over to this cell right here, you'll notice it cannot be a two, four, or six because of the column, or five, seven, eight, nine because of the row. That's just a one or a three. And if you move down to this cell right here, you'll notice it can't be a four, six, eight, or a nine because of the column, or three, five, seven in the row. That's just a one or a two possibility. Now these three cells right here, they have all the makings of a Sudoku XY wing. So an XY wing is when you have three cells, one of them contains three different candidates, then and it sees the other two. So it sees these two. And then one of the cells contains one of the candidates, uh, two of the candidates, and the third cell contains uh, one of these shared candidates plus the third candidate that's found in the, in the pivot cell there. So you notice this is a one, two, or three. A one's found in all three cells. A two's also in here, and a three's also in there. The problem is this is not a normal XY wing because for this to work as an XY wing, or an XYZ wing, I should say, for an XYZ wing, one of these pincher cells would need to be inside the same block as the pivot. However, if you combine this with another strategy called an empty rectangle, you could start making some more eliminations. And what you have to combine with and see is you notice there's a one in all three of these cells. So that's the, the one is the candidate you need to focus on. If you can find an empty rectangle shape that it lines up to, in this case, these ones are in row one. And in block three, you have what's called an empty rectangle shape. What that means is I call slice and dice. You can slice across the row and dice down the column, and you can eliminate all the possibilities for one in that block with just one horizontal slice and one vertical slice. So this is an empty rectangle shape. Same thing down here in block seven. Line up with this. You can do a slice there and a dice across there. And what's the significance of that? When you combine this X, Y, Z wing with those empty rectangle shapes or empty rectangle intersections, you notice you have this strategy here plus these two. So that's three, kind of like the Windward Islands being three territories. Well, to show you what this does, and believe it or not, this strategy has a name. It's called an X, Y, Z transport. Okay, to show you what it does, Notice what happens if this is a one. If this is a one, we're going to do some coloring here. You'll see that none of these cells could be a one. And now with this empty rectangle shape, a one has to be in one of these cells. And it points right here. So you can eliminate a one from that cell. Conversely, you could also go over here and see a one's pointing in that cell. Either way, you could not have a one in this cell right there. You could eliminate it. Okay. No biggie, that's one situation. What if this is a two? If this is a two, well, because of how an XYZ wing works, that has to be a one. Guess what? You remove the ones as a possibility is there. Ones have to be here, and this cannot be a one. You can eliminate that, right? All right, I think you're going to see what's going to happen here. If this is a three, if it's a three in the corner, bum, 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 this has to be a one. This would not be a one because of the one being there. And you got your ones restricted as a pointing pair here in block three. And this could not be a one. 
So you noticed, no matter what this cell is, one, two, or three, this cell can never contain a one because of this X, Y, Z wing transport. It transports the elimination down to another block. So how can you take advantage of that? You can take advantage of that by knowing this can never be a one. So you can eliminate a one right there, but you're not done. You're gonna get some reward here and get some solved cells, but you gotta continue to look to see impact row column block. Maybe you'll need another X, Y, Z wing transport. Let's see. Put a nine right there, means this has to be a one. And now let's follow some of these eliminations. You notice now with these two nines and this nine, only one place for a nine in block eight. And then with these nines and this nine, you can solve for a nine in block two. With these nines, only one place for a nine in block six. And then with these nines, you can solve for a nine right here. And then follow these four nines up and over and you can solve for a nine right here. So far, making great progress. And by solving this nine, now you displace that two marking, which means you can solve this cell for a two. Which means you can solve this cell for a one, which displaces this other two. Okay, you just solve for a one here. To go with these ones, you can solve this cell for a one. And now you notice with this one here, guess what? That has to be your three, because you can remove a one from right there. And now that, that is a three, what does that do for you? You got across here a two, three, five, seven, eight, nine. You get a one, four, and a six. Well, with the six and the one there, this has to be your four. And with this one right there, this is going to be your one displacing that six. Okay. Now you create a bunch of restriction in column nine. What's left here? You got a one, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you need a three and a four. Well, with this three, can't be here. This has to be your three, that has to be your four. Okay, looking good. Now, you create another restriction down here in column four. You got a one, two, three, four, six, nine, you need a five, seven, and an eight. Well, if you notice you have a five and seven looking at this cell, and the seven repeats here, you can solve all three using my neat naked triple trick. This has to be an eight. The only place the seven goes right there, and this is going to be your five, which displaces the eight right here. And then if you follow these two sevens, you'll notice the only place for a seven in block seven is right there, displacing that five. Nice. And then you can follow these fives, solve for a five right here, and finish up row nine now with a six. Awesome. And then you see you have a full house, eight of nine cells filled out in column one. Only thing missing is a three. So you can solve that for a three now. And then what else can you do? Well, you might notice you just need a two and three here in block eight. So attack those restrictions as much as you can. Well, with this three, that's got to be a three. That's got to be your two. And now you can displace that two. Solve this for a two. Solve this for a six. This puzzle is starting to get a little bit easier now. Okay, after you make all those marks, check out where these eights can go. Here in block six, since so you have an eight in row four and row six, this has to be an eight. And now with this two and this two, you can solve for a two right here. Then you'll notice with this five and this five, you can solve for a five right there. With this six, this has to be a six. This has to be a four to finish block six. I don't see a four in row four, so you can put a four right there. And then see if you can finish up block five here. You have a one, two, three, four, eight, nine. You need a five, six, seven. Well, you'll notice that you got five right here and here. So solve that for a five with the six. This is your six. That's going to be your seven. Finish up block four with a seven. And you got now just a, looks like a four and a six here. Can't solve that just yet. Let's move the other way. Let's move up the column. You have just two cells remaining in column six. Looks like a one and a two. Well, with this two, there's your two, there's your one. Two cells remain in column seven. One's a seven, obviously, the other's a four. Well, with this four, that's your four, that's going to be your seven. And now you can solve the seven here, and this has to be your eight. 
And then you can solve for, it looks like the eight right there. This is gonna be your three. Solve for a three right here. That can be your one. All right, follow these ones. This has to be a one. You have a four to finish, block seven. Disambiguate to six, four right there. And then you can follow this six down. Only place you can go and block seven is right there. And your last digit is a three. Now, see if you can find the unbelievable strategy in this next puzzle by Shy. Thank you so much for watching.